This is the Marshmallow Inferno Lab. It goes with Lesson 2 in your Friendly Chemistry course. In this lesson, you will have been introducing your students to the idea of what an element is. In this lab, you'll take a marshmallow, which is a combination of several different elements, and reduce it to one single element, the element carbon. Equipment that you'll need for this lab includes a metal spoon, some sort of heat source uh, with an open flame. Uh, we use votive candles. If you choose to or have just tall taper candles, you'll want to support them in a way, uh, either in a cup with rocks or sand or in a candlestick. If you have Bunsen burners in the lab, uh, those will work just fine. You'll just need to be aware that the heat uh, supplied by a Bunsen burner is much greater than that by a candle. Then you'll need a supply of some fresh, raw, uncooked marshmallows. It's also a good idea to have on hand a container of water uh, in case you have fire that gets to the location where you don't intend for it to be. Or if you have a student uh, with uh, gets a marshmallow on their hand that's hot and they just need to cool it off quickly. And then finally, uh, depending upon your heat source, if you use candles, you'll obviously, obviously need some matches or a lighter. It's also a good idea to uh, create a placemat. Uh, we just use some newspaper, or you can use a cookie sheet of some sort. If you do have spills, uh, that makes cleanup a lot easier. So, to begin the lab, what you'll do is initially have your students make observations of a raw marshmallow. So with each, each uh, child, you'll pass out a uh, raw marshmallow for them. And it, a, a good idea is to go back to that data table that you used earlier with your unknown powders. Instead of having an ID number here for the powder, they can just put marshmallow in that space. And what you'll want to do is have them go through at least this first column on the data table here. So when you first look at your marshmallow, you first get your marshmallow. It looked like, and they'll describe its color, shape, uh, it smelled like, they'll take a sniff of it. Uh, it felt like, so they're going to look at texture, if it's squishy, crunchy, hard. It sounded, and I think you can definitely hear some sounds here. Uh, if they put it up real close to their ear and squish it, they may hear some of the little bubbles popping on the inside. And finally, you allow them to taste that marshmallow. Uh, you can also and not only have them look at the external parts of that marshmallow, but you can encourage them to just rip open that marshmallow and take a look at the guts on the inside of it. And again, uh, look at it, smell it, feel it. I think they'll find that it's much stickier on the inside uh, than it was on the outside. Uh, an optional, optional set of observations you can make with your students if you wish is to have them go ahead and do these other columns of uh, uh, tests with their marshmallow. They can have add some water to it and then if you have some vinegar handy drop some vinegar on it see if they get any bubbles to indicate any sort of uh, baking soda, baking powder, leavening agent in the marshmallow and then finally you can have them do the iodine test. You can mix up again some of the tincture of iodine and drop uh, droplets on it and I think they will they should find uh, that definitely marshmallows do have a starch in them and they should see uh, some uh, definite purple color changes to the iodine. So again these are optional observations you can make if you like but definitely have them do at least this first column. Uh, you don't have to use this data table at all. You can just have them write their observations down on their own paper or you can jot them down on your flip chart or dry erase board as you uh, conduct the lab. So after they've made their initial observations of their raw marshmallow, uh, depending upon uh, whether you do the lab as a demonstration uh, for all the students to observe or if you have them uh, do it themselves, you'll uh, then pass out uh, marshmallows again. Now if each student is doing it themselves, you'll need to make sure that they're aware that you will have an open flame 
and that we uh, in lab activities one must definitely be careful and safe if they've got long hair it'll need to be pulled back into a ponytail if uh, any of your students have any necklaces or jewelry hanging around their neck uh, beads or anything like that or uh, lanyards they need to tuck those in or uh, remove them if they've got long sleeves on they may need to uh, push them back we just don't want anything to accidentally get over the top of the candle here and catch on fire also again uh, the water a little water supply nearby is a really good idea and then if you're in a public place because we will be taking that marshmallow catching it on fire and just we're just going to burn the tar out of it we're just going to make it black as can be and I think if you're familiar with what marshmallows do when they burn they do produce a good bit of smoke and sometimes I've had situations where the smoke coming from the marshmallow actually sets off a smoke detector and therefore fire alarms if I'm in a public uh, facility so you may want to visit with the the people in, involved at, if you're in a school or if you're in a church setting and just make sure that if an alarm does get set off that it's definitely uh, it's not a fire happening an actual fire that you're just conducting a lab if you are unsure about this you can always move this lab to an outdoor location uh, just be aware that your candles may need to be shielded if it's windy outside so to begin your students will have made observations of the raw marshmallow and then you'll just go about heating that marshmallow so uh, we'll strike our match here we'll light our candle and that little uh, container of water does come in handy to extinguish your match so you don't drop it on the paper and accidentally catch that on fire so we're going to put the marshmallow on the spoon and just begin to heat it one thing you may want to do if your students are doing this themselves is that the metal spoon can conduct heat so if you're doing this over a Bunsen burner or a more intense heat source you'll uh, want to be aware of that and you may need to have your students wear a, a oven mitt or a heat protection a glove of some sort to protect their hands so we're just going to begin heating it and because we actually want to catch the marshmallow on fire I'm going to go ahead and let the flame kind of come around the side here you don't want to dump your marshmallow into the fire because that'll put the fire out and then you've got the potential for uh, your placemat catching on fire there too so I've got my marshmallow starting to burn here as it does begin to burn have your students continue to make observations I'm gonna move these back just a little here have them continue to make observations what's going on with it and and you may have uh, a student uh, volunteer to be kind of a recording person to write down these observations they'll look for things like color change a uh, change in size shape as smoke is produced they'll begin to uh, smell they'll pick up different odors So we'll just continue to heat and heat that marshmallow and just, just let it burn. The idea here is to totally incinerate that marshmallow. It'll go through different phases where it'll smoke and smoke and then it'll appear to quit smoking. Uh, and but then we'll smoke again you want to take it to where you find no white part of the marshmallow remaining I still have at this point right now I still have a good bit of white marshmallow over here and I'll, what I'm gonna do is turn my spoon around and uh, cook it on that side there after a while your spoon the marshmallow will get stuck to the spoon and you can reposition it so we're just going to take it around like that and 
get it cooked over here too. Every now and then uh, your students may observe little smoke rings uh, coming from the marshmallow which are kind of fun to see. You can see here I'm able to turn the spoon com almost completely over in an effort to try to cook any of the inside portions of that marshmallow. Here we got a little bit of the guts from the inside are kind of squirting out so we're going to take care of those. And it'll smoke and hiss and just go through several cycles of that. There, that's working really nice there. You can see little smoke rings every now and then popping out of here. This is what you want. You just want to just burn the daylights out of that marshmallow. Your students may notice that the smoke changes color from time to time too. A sign that you've got it uh, totally cooked is when the smoking totally stops. You'll also hear some uh, crackling sounds also when the marshmallow is totally incinerated. I think I've just about got this marshmallow done. It might could use a little more on the back side. At this point what we can do is go ahead and extinguish the flame and then uh, let the marshmallow cool, let the spoon cool and we're going to make another set of observations of the marshmallow. While the marshmallow and spoon are cooling, ask your students what marshmallows are made from. You might get responses like uh, maybe a gelatin, sugar, starches, and have them take a look at the bag and read the ingredients there. You can see it says it's uh, corn syrup, sugar, dextrose, which is a form of glucose, uh, modified food starch, uh, water, gelatin, and then it's got some flavorings, and then it's got another compound here, tetrasodium pyrophosphate. Uh, the main ingredients that we're looking at here are the sugars and the starch. And so as the marshmallow has now cooled, you can ask your students to be in, to make some observations again. You can go back down the same list you did on earlier with the data table and start with how does it look? Well it's obviously had a color change. Uh, it's got a texture change. If it's Once it's cooled now you can have your students touch it, listen to it, they can smell it now, they can look inside, see what it looks like. This black crunchy powder and then ultimately challenge them to taste it. Uh, some students may resist this but uh, encourage them to taste it. Just put a little uh, flake or two on their finger and then touch their tongue and ask them if, uh, if it tastes the same or how would they describe the taste now of their marshmallow. And then ask them, well, uh, what do you think happened here? Why is this marshmallow not the same any longer? And you'll, you'll probably get answers like, well, we heated it, we burned it. And then you might ask them, well, did anything leave the marshmallow? Uh, again, you might get responses like, well, there was some smoke that left. And at this point, you can refer them back to that list of ingredients there. And it said it was mainly sugars and starches that were uh, made up. And then gelatin that gives it that rubbery -ness. Uh, and those sugars and starches are mainly made up of three different elements. Three different elements. It's carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And then with the gelatin, uh, it has some proteins involved, so there's some nitrogen in there also. But mainly we're looking at the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, the hydrogen and oxygen were joined together in the marshmallow in the form of water. So when we cooked when we heated the marshmallow, a lot of the smoke that was leaving and then uh, there was steam that was leaving uh, in the form of water vapor. So the water was actually boiling, evaporating 
inside the marshmallow and then spewing out. Uh, so the hydrogen and oxygen left. Uh, some of the nitrogen uh, also left in the smoke. Uh, then what we have left is mainly carbon. So we have this shell here that is basically just carbon. Atomic number six, symbol capital C, carbon. So we've been able to take the marshmallow, which was once a combination of some complex uh, molecules there, those sugar and starch molecules, and with heat we drove off the water and some of the other elements and we're just left with carbon, the element carbon. So to end the lab now, what you'll have to do is think about cleanup. Uh, uh, you can encourage your students to explore what was left of the marshmallow and then if you plan on uh, reusing your spoons again, uh, what we found that works best for cleanup is just to soak them in water. Now you can see this one here, it wasn't totally done on the inside. We still have some raw marshmallow in there and so you'll probably want to have gone a little farther with this uh, the heating process there. So soaking your spoons in water overnight, uh, usually the next day you can get most of the marshmallow off. So uh, that's a recommendation there for cleanup of, of your spoons so enable you to use them again on the next time that you incinerate some marshmallows. So this has been the marshmallow incinerator lab which goes with lesson two in your friendly chemistry course. Remember to keep safety a priority and you can continue enjoying labs that way with your students. Mm -hmm.